Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. For this week we're going to be getting the crate to randomly change the weapon every time you collect it. And to test that we're going to need to create two different types of weapons to switch between. So let's get started by going into the weapons sprite and we're going to go into the costumes and we're going to create a second costume. We've already got our basic gun so let's duplicate this. Right click and duplicate and then let's make something that's going to be a bit more rapid fire. Now I'm going to make a bunch of little tubes kind of like this, make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to make like a sort of Gatling gun. That's my plan. And I might need to just make the outline a little bit narrower. And I need to bring this to the front. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now what I'm going to do, some of these, this here, this here. Okay, I think this is a very cool little rapid fire gun. So let's give this a different name. Uh, let's call this uh, 2 because it's going to be weapon 2. And then I'm going to put a little hyphen and Gatling gun. And then let's click on this one and rename this. I'm going to call this 1 and then I'm just going to call this rifle. So now we've got two different weapons. They've got two different names. I've also put the number of the weapon into the title, and that's just to make sure that we don't accidentally put them into the wrong order later, um, because as we'll be adding more and more weapons, we need to make sure that we've got them in the right order. Otherwise, the wrong kind of weapon will show up. Uh, the code might get a little confused. Okay, so now let's make some code to switch between our weapons. Click on the code tab of your weapon sprite, and let's start off by just creating some variables that are going to keep track of what weapon we're holding right now and how many weapons we have, which will be important later. So let's go to variables, let's click on make a variable, let's make sure that this is for all sprites, and we'll call this current weapon, then press OK. And we're going to set the current weapon at the beginning of the game right here to one. That's the weapon we're always going to start on. Now let's create a second variable and we're going to call this one total weapons. Again, make sure for all sprites is selected and you're going to need to update this every time you add in a new weapon. So currently we have total weapons two we have two different weapons. When you add in more, make sure that you come back to this variable and change it to be accurate to the number of weapons that you have. Now the reason that we have a variable for our number of total weapons is that it's going to be important for the randomization to code. If we're going to be choosing a random weapon from a, a number of weapons, we need to know how many weapons we're randomizing between. Next, we need to make sure that the costume changes depending which weapon we're holding according to the variable. So let's go to looks, let's look for switch costume to, and let's put that into the forever loop here. And we want to switch this costume to our variable current weapon. Okay, now let's create some cheat code so that we can swap between the weapons as we want to. When you actually get other people to play the game, you probably want to deactivate these cheat codes by like sort of pulling the code apart. But for now, while we're testing it, they're really useful. They save us a bunch of time. So let's go to events and get out when space key pressed, then change space to one. And when we press the one key, we're going to get out a set current weapon to one. Now let's duplicate this bit of code. And when we press the two key, we're going to set the current weapon to two. All right, let's give that a test. Make it nice and big. All right, so now when I press number one and number two, excellent, it's swapping between them. Very good. Now there's one more thing that would be kind of useful to do. If you notice, if you drag around sprites, you can actually change the ordering of the sprites. So I've just dragged the player around, and now when we start the game, the gun's kind of hidden by the player, where we want the gun to be on top of the player, like that. That looks way better. So we can make sure that the code actually does this. If we just go to looks, and we get out a go to front layer, and we put that right into our forever loop. And so now, 
even if I drag the player sprite around, it doesn't matter. As soon as the game starts, they flip the right way around again with the weapon on top. Now currently, although our weapons look different, they actually behave exactly the same, which is very boring. So let's go into the code and change the amount of damage that they do. So go into your weapon sprite and then look for your define shoot. So we've got this if key space pressed, create a clone of the projectile and then set the weapon recharge. Well, we want this to be a little bit different depending on the type of weapon that we have. We want the weapon recharge to be maybe faster or slower. And we might even want to change the kind of projectiles that we're making. So we're going to get out this create clone of projectile and set our weapon recharge to 10. And then what we're going to do is go to my blocks. We're going to create a block and we're going to call it weapon one. And I'm going to put a little hyphen in there like that. And I'm going to call this rifle. And then we're going to do this again. We're going to make weapon two Gatling gun. So now we've got our weapon one rifle over here, our weapon two Gatling gun over here. We need to make sure that our weapon one is right in here in the space and our weapon two is also right here in the space. Now we're going to take this code, this create clone of projectile. We're going to put it underneath weapon one rifle. We've got our weapon recharge and now we're going to set a new variable. Go to variables, click on make a variable and we're going to call this variable damage. And this is how we're going to make different projectiles do different amounts of damage from different types of weapons. So press OK here and make sure it's for all sprites. Then we're going to get out a set damage. Now, of course, the other really important thing is that we make sure that this code only runs if we are holding weapon one. So we need to go to control, get out an if then and put that right here. And then inside this space, we need to go to operators, get out an equals operator, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight from the top. I'm going to zoom in so you can see this a bit better. And then we want to go to variables, get out current weapon, put that into the first socket of this equals operator. And we want to see if the current weapon is equal to one. Then we run this code. Now we can have a lot of fun experimenting with the numbers that we put into weapon recharge and damage. And I recommend you try a bunch of different numbers. And what we're also going to need to do is change the HP of the enemy a little bit later. Um, for now, these are some numbers that I quite like. Um, I think we're going to set the rifles weapon recharge to nine. We're going to set the damage really high. We're going to make the damage five. But then for the Gatling gun, we're going to make it quite different. So we're going to copy right click here on this if we're going to duplicate. We're going to put that there. Now, the first thing we need to change is what weapon number is the Gatling gun? Well, that's weapon number two. The projectile can stay the same. That's fine. But let's set the weapon recharge really low. Let's set it all the way down to one. Then let's the damage also really low. Let's make that also one. Let's give that a test, shall we? Okay, so now we've got this slow firing rifle and then this very rapidly firing Gatling gun, which is very cool. Now we do have a bit of a problem in that um, these rifle bullets aren't doing five damage. We're still taking two hits to kill the enemies. And that's because we actually haven't used the damage variable in our enemy code. So let's fix that now. Go to your enemy sprite and look for the define take damage. Let's have a look and we can see right here if they touch the projectile, it changes HP by minus one. Well, we want that actually to be minus damage. So let's go to operators because we're going to need that for a minus operator. Put that right here. And then we're going to go to variables, get out a damage variable 
and put it right into that second slot of the minus operator. So now let's test this. And what we'll also do while we're here is we'll get out a say HP. So we can see how much HP our enemies have. And while we're at it, let's make the game a little bit harder. Currently, we've got set HP to two at the beginning of the game. Let's set the HP to five instead. Okay, so now we'll give this a test. And now the enemies have five HP and each rifle uh, bullet completely destroys the enemy in one shot. But then if I swap to the Gatling gun, there we go. That is very satisfying. So now the two weapons have like two different strengths and weaknesses, which is really useful and really interesting strategically. Now, the only thing we need to do now is make it so that when you actually pick up the crate, it will change your weapon. So we need some randomization code. So let's go into the crate sprite and look around for our define get collected. This is the code that happens when the player collects the crate. We've got our points going up uh, and the little point animation there. We've got the teleport code. So let's put some code underneath where it says teleport that will change the weapon. So let's get out a set current weapon. Put that right underneath where it says teleport. Then go to operators and get out a pick random one to 10 and put that into here. Now we could just say pick random one to two. We've got two weapons, and it's gonna pick a random number between one and two. But remember those variables we made earlier? We've got a variable for our total weapons. So let's get out a total weapons and put that over the two. And now as we update the number of total weapons we have, this code will continue to work. And as you add more and more weapons, if you have five or 10 or 20 weapons, the code will just keep working. Now let's give that a test. And you might notice that sometimes when we pick up the crate, the weapon doesn't change. Sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. Now, why is that? Well, we are still choosing a random weapon, which means that if we've got the Gatling gun already and we get a new weapon and it chooses a random one, it might just choose the Gatling gun again, which while that works technically, it kind of feels wrong to the player, doesn't it? It feels like you should have a new weapon every time you collect a crate. So let's put in just a little bit of extra code to make sure that we don't randomly select the same weapon we've already been holding. Let's make a variable that's called old weapon. We're going to set the old weapon to whatever the current weapon is. We're going to put this right underneath teleport. So now we've got a variable that's going to keep track of what the weapon we just had was as we make a new weapon roll. We're going to go to control and get out a repeat until and put this around our set current weapon right underneath our set old weapon and we want to keep choosing a random weapon until the new weapon is different to the old weapon. So let's go to operators, let's get out an equals, let's put that there, let's go to variables and get out current weapon and old weapon but we want to make sure that the current weapon is not the old weapon so go back to operators and get out a not operator and now you can take this whole equals and put it inside the not and put that whole thing into our repeat until and now this little bit of code will make sure that whenever we pick up the crate it's always always going to change the weapon and it's always, always going to choose a different one for us. Now, while you're testing the game, it's probably pretty useful to keep that say HP, just so you have an idea of how much damage your weapons are doing and how satisfying it is, whether they're working the way they're supposed to be. Um, but once we are finished doing our testing, 
we probably want to take out that say HP, and that's going to be in the enemy sprite. So yep, cool, here it is, the say HP, we can take that out. And the other thing that we can do is probably hide some of these variables. Um, we don't need to have the current weapon variable because we can see what weapon uh, that the player is holding. We don't need the damage variable to be uh, visible. And we don't need the old weapon or the total weapons. Yep, just having the points is probably enough. And so now we've got a much cleaner looking game with our two different weapons. So I'm going to show you how to make different types of weapons, but you should also think about the different types of weapons you want to make. Um, think about changing the HP of your enemies, think about changing the damage and the recharge rate of your weapons, and see what kind of interesting different kinds of weapons you can make. That's all we've got time for this week. Subscribe and ring the bell to see the next episode and see what next weapon I'm going to show you how to make. Let me know in the comments what you would like me to do next, if there's any weapons you'd like me to try and make for this game, or if you need any help with your code. I can't answer the comments like I used to, but if you're an experienced coder, maybe you have a look at the comments, see if you can help some people who are asking questions who are newer to Scratch than you. Aside from that, stay awesome. Be cool to each other and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.